There's a new space race underway. This moment represents the beginning of a new space age. You can't go a single day without hearing from some billionaire who wants us to colonize space. Pack our bags and leave Earth behind. Elon Musk wants us to jump on a big rocket and become a multiplanetary species on Mars. Living on Mars is for the adventurous. I think there's a certain romance of, of going to a place that no one has gone before. So, why is going to Mars just a terrible idea? Absolutely a fool's errand and hideously awful idea for pretty much every angle. Why? This isn't often talked about. It's quite fashionable to say something along the lines of, oh, wow, looking towards the stars. You hear a few other key aspects like, wow, being innovative and planning humanity's future. You hear stuff like that. And then you hear like, oh, Elon, ah, he's a man who is looking to the stars. He is somebody who is seeing the future and planning for human. Okay, whoa, okay, great, 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 great. First of all, he's not the first fool to look up at the stars, okay? Galileo was looking up at stars. The idea of colonizing other planets is not new. Elon Musk did not invent that, okay? Um, Jules Verne was talking about this back when a lot of those cowboy Josie Wales, you know, kind of people were living. So this is not new, folks. But here's the thing. You know why we don't have a moon base? You know why we only have one space station? You know why we haven't been to another planet? Because it's a shitty idea. That's why. It's super shitty. Everything wrong with it. There's uh, tons of things wrong with it. Okay? Space sucks. It sucks more than you can imagine. For a lot of reasons. And these reasons are not insignificant. Any one of these reasons is like a deal breaker, okay? <laughs> and uh, going to space has dozens and dozens of them. Let's just start here. <sighs> radiation. It doesn't get talked about, but radiation. Yeah, our uh, y'all might know about UVA, UVB, and UVC. Uh, you know, types of UV rays. So far, so good. But you know how the little bottle only says A and B type, you know, as opposed to C type? Yeah, that's because our atmosphere blocks like 99% or more of uh, UVC radiation, which is the deadly cancer one. Right. So as soon as you leave the atmosphere, <clears throat> you're exposed to all of that, which let's just say is 100 times more than you're used to, etc. So to put this in perspective, in human terms, let's, okay, you can imagine like you make a painting on a wall, how long will it take before that wall will fade in the sun? Maybe like two years it'll kind of fade, 10 years there's nothing left, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's getting broken down by the radiation. Okay, and, and we can, we acknowledge that, thus we repaint it, that kind of thing. All right, so far so good. Okay, we understand what radiation is, great. Now, let's multiply that by a thousand. You are not prepared. Dial it up a handful of magnitudes. Yaha, uh -huh. that's hitting your body. That's hitting your cells. That's hitting your DNA. That's hitting your brain. That's hitting all your electronics is the radiation. In fact, electronics, for example, if you brought up like an iPhone, if that works six months, I'd be impressed. Typically, certainly less than a year, it's fried. Electronics fry in this kind of radiation. Sure, you can shield them up, etc. Sure, fine. But that's a fundamental problem that's basically 100 to 1,000 times worse than it is right here uh, on Earth. So, yeah, you want to live out in space for three years? You are dead, my friend. You are dead. Cancer. I mean, you're going to get cancer. Your odds of living three years in space and not getting cancer are absurd. Yeah, space sucks because of the radiation. So, yeah, they even cycle out astronauts out of the International Space Station for a lot of reasons. 
Let's just say you figured out how to make electronics that are radiation proof, and you figured out a cure for cancer, and you figured out a way to shield all electronics, wires, and everything from any form of sun or radiation of any way, shape, or form. Let's say you solved that problem. Great. Well, now we got the zero G problem. I tell you what, basic premise, humans are not supposed to live in space. Let me put this nice and simple. We're not supposed to live there. Space kills humans. Definitely. Super fast, too. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, like, specifically, the human body is built, designed, evolved, etc., to live on the surface of this earth. So far, so darn good. In fact, plants do the same thing. In plants, this is called trophism, you know, etc., which basically means... In plants, they depend on gravity so that the roots grow down and the flower grows up. You know, that kind of thing. Right. When you put plants in zero gravity, they grow all kinds of weird and wonky. Right. Humans are kind of the same way. We're built like blood pressure systems, for example. And uh, the way that our heart, lungs, and body are all designed and the way that we move, etc. Is all designed with gravity in mind. Because that's never not been the case. What this means is, when you're in a low gravity situation, this is catastrophic for your body in a, for a lot of reasons, a lot. And one of which, let's start here, is muscle atrophy, which don't. basically means uh, you don't have to engage your muscles like you normally would, you know, leg muscles, etc. And on a long enough timeline, you can actually lose function. In other words, you'll lose function of your legs and you'll lose the ability to walk if you're in space for a magical amount of time. So to combat this, astronauts have got to exercise like four hours to six hours a day. You know, that means like have a bungee cord pulling them down onto a uh, treadmill or something like that. Just so that they still have the, they don't lose the ability to walk for life. Yeah. In fact, when they come back from the International Space Station, it's not like they walk off and wave to everyone and go down in a parade. No, their in, in, entire ability to balance themselves, let alone uh, be able to stand up, let alone be able to walk a decent distance, let alone cardiovascular health, let alone heart strength, etc. All of that's shot to hell. These folks are like, oh man, they are basically bedridden and they've got to be like, they, you know, catered to for like a year after they come back. Okay, I'm telling you, like, it sucks so much to be in space for six months. It sucks so much. That's six months. Okay, so if you're going to sit and, like, you got a three-year plan of living in space somehow? Uh, 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 no. Rule one, humans are not supposed to live in outer space. You're not supposed to live there. We're just not made for it in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Oh, okay, but let's just say we figured that one out. Now we got the cold problem, all right? Man, gosh, a lot of us can fathom cold, and we know what that means intuitively, but jeepers, ah, absolute zero kind of cold? This is a different kind of cold than humans are capable of really understanding. Instantaneous freezing. Chemistry is different. I mean, everything's different. So operating in a absolute zero kind of environment basically makes you a prisoner and fully dependent on, well, let's face it, a heater of some kind because you don't just hang out in space with no electricity and just wait for conditions to improve. Uh, no, you die very fast. You die super fast <laughs> without a lot of this stuff. Heat is one of them. Oh yeah, and obviously air, I mean, con. You know, you gotta have that apparently, and one hitch in that system, like we gotta take the, the air system down for maintenance, boys. Uh-huh, and, and that brings me to the next thing. Uh, not only are humans not supposed to live in space, but you got the, the breakdown problem. So let me phrase this in a different way. If you're sitting on Earth and your car breaks down, it could be, oh, well, this particular uh, spark plug wasn't firing, sure or your battery was unplugged, or you need uh, uh, an extra little wire so you can jimmy rig this to that, or whatever the case is. This is a complex system, a car. 
And uh, you need, let's say, spare parts, fuel, miscellaneous stuff in order to keep it working. This is natural no matter what you're building, no matter how fancy it is, no matter how expensive it is, no matter how many NASA stickers are all over it. These things, all things on Earth need maintenance, especially if you're bringing them out into space and crash landing on a planet. I mean, man, you are going to need spare parts like a bastard. Oh my gosh. I mean, to drive a fleet of trucks across Alabama, how many, what, spare parts and bits of fuel? I mean, how much stuff will you need to bring a fleet over that far, okay? And that is like a million times easier and a million times less complex than going to Mars. Oh my God. If you are missing the tiniest part, if you run out of tape, you know, you're dead. If you run out of, your O2 has one tiny little thing, you're dead. If uh, one wire was loose, like Apollo 13 style, one wire was loose out of the little bit of insulation, one time, stir one tank, sparks apart, you're dead. If any one of these thousand systems that they depend on for their life, if any one of them ever fail, even for an instant, they're dead. The air pressure in their little capsule that they're living on oh yeah one bolt comes loose on that one Psh, you're dead <laughs> this is going to happen folks this is going to happen they are going to die anyone who goes there will die 100 percent for sure i doubt they would even arrive but let's just say they arrived even if you fix all these problems, even if you have every single spare part that could be invented, even if, even if you like recycle your feces to re-eat it. I mean, all of these things, even if you figure all this out, you're gonna starve to death. I mean, you just, you, you can't bring four years worth of food for two people. I mean, sure, you can get some crackers and llamas bread and Jello, I don't know, whatever the hell you're doing, but food for two years, let alone four years? Yeah, uh -huh. they're gonna starve to death, for damn sure. So, let's just say you solve the problem of uh, water. Man, that's impossible to say. Okay, you have some kind of water containment system and you drink your own piss and you have X amount of water that you're able to somehow recycle in a perfect system that never goes wrong, never spills, never breaks. Okay, you're using the same water for basically the rest of your life. Fine. Let's just say you figured all that out. Good for you, by the way. All right, well, now you got the radiation problem. What are you going to do? You got to live underground, effectively in a cave. <sighs> Best case scenario, best case, absolute perfection here. What do you got? You moved a handful of people to Mars in order to live in a tiny little mattress-sized jail cell underground. I, presumably, they had to dig out themselves somehow. I don't know. Maybe they'll bring an auger machine. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, doubt it. Uh, I don't know how they're going to pull that off, but let's just say they did. What'd you gain here? What'd you gain? This will be man humanity's hope for survival into the future. Shut up. Oh, hell no. That sucks so bad. You've got what? A $3 billion cave with a person in it. Temporarily. I mean, they're going to die for sure. <laughs> what, are they going to have like Mars babies or something? No, they're not. <laughs> said it already, but again, humans are not supposed to live in space and certainly not supposed to live on Mars at all. It will kill you super fast. So let's just imagine uh, you were actually here at Mars. One, low pressure. You're dealing with what, 1% of the pressure? Oh yeah, you basically explode right away as soon as you go out there. Decompression sickness thing, like the equivalent of getting the bends. Uh, let's just say it's like that times a gajillion. I mean, within a few seconds, you're already dying. Basically, you're dead. Okay, but beyond that, let's say you got the spacesuit pressure thing all figured out, and now you have the oxygen problem. Uh, I imagine you're gonna have to generate that somehow. Oh, you're gonna do that with solar power, panels, chemistry, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, what are the odds that that breaks for one second, uh, ever? 
Yeah, okay. But let's just say you got the whole oxygen thing figured out. All right, well, then you got the temperature thing to deal with. Yeah, it's ridiculously cold out there. Like, Antarctica on the coldest day is warm compared to Mars. Okay, but, but let's just say you figured all that out. Okay, well, yeah, you got that dust problem because they've got perichlorites in there. Uh, what that basically means, it's poisonous. Yeah, straight up toxic to humans. Yeah, it'll kill you right away. And actually, the little um, the size of the dust molecules are sort of like you can imagine it like little razor blades. So if even just a tiny piece of particle gets in, it'll shred up your lungs, just like breathing uh, miniature razor blades. Ain't nobody got time. Yeah, for that. so that'll kill you in no time. What do you expect to live three years on Mars somehow? No, How about no, you? no way, no way, no way. Well, let's just say you figured that out and you found a way that 0% dust ever gets into anything you ever breathe ever. And that system works perfectly forever. Well, you still got the radiation problem. And again, sure, you can live underground, you can mitigate that, but uh, you're not going to be living three years. I wouldn't expect so. You get, you're going to die of cancer or just go to sleep one night and not wake up. And uh, a North Korean prison camp in Antarctica would be a dream vacation for you <laughs> compared to living on Mars and or being in space. Oh, my God. And your survival rate will be way higher. Mm. If we're looking for another place to live, we might as well go to the moon. I mean, Jesus. Uh, we can go there anytime we want. And it takes five days. Sweet. But uh, going to Mars takes like eight months to get there. Man, we haven't even talked cost here, planning, etc. And, you know, whatever. So why not just go to the moon if you're really interstellar about this whole shit? Well, fun fact. They thought about that over the last 50 years and they concluded. Oh, hell no. Space sucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> why would you ever want to live on the moon? That is just the most absurd place to live. Because, you know. Lack of air, radiation in space, meteors, I mean, running out of food, running out of water. And that's if you could deliver them shit once a week. Yeah, if you could deliver it once a week, it would still suck. Why? Why? I mean, we have shitloads of desert in America here, let alone the, across the world, that you're welcome to check out all you want. I'm sure you could probably score, you know, 100 square meters of desert in some random spot. You can do whatever the hell you want with it, okay? And, and there's a reason people don't live there, though, okay? And that's with the pressure thing figured out, water thing figured out, food delivery thing figured out, transport thing figured out, and with the gravity thing figured out, the oxygen thing figured out, and the radiation problem solved, access to modern technology. It would still suck. It would suck so much. And people would look at you like, why did you just dig a hole in the desert to live underground in a jail cell forever? Like, why? I, I, I mean, you could run in some sort of Facebook live channel and, well, this is the next hope for humanity. Oh, hell no. Is it now? I tell you, uh, you might convince a few people, but I'm a little more skeptical than that. I think uh, if a person were to, you know, build a little cave in a in a random spot of desert on earth i would actually say that's quite pointless but if he was going to come back to me and say well no see what we're doing is figuring out the technology such that uh humanity can survive this way into the future like, mm, okay that makes sense sort of but uh how far in the future are you prepping here are you figuring like 5,000 years? People have got to make it out? I, I tell you what, sir. I am quite certain technology will be a hell of a lot better in 5,000 years than it is now. I'm, I'm certain of that. If we exist. Okay, so you're talking about a problem that might occur in, you know, 1,000 to 5,000 years to 10,000 years. Okay, and you're, you're using that potential eventuality as uh, a carrot and a stick here on why we should spend two billion to go to Mars, okay? Those are two completely separate ideas, okay? It, it, hey, 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 is going to another planet cool? Yes, yes, I agree. But let me ask you this. How many 
rovers have actually landed on Mars. Don't say one. Do you even know? Do you even give enough of a damn to even know how many rovers we have on Mars and how many are currently functional? How many kilometers have they driven? What have they discovered? You see, maybe you know the answers to these questions. We over 90% of people don't. So just being totally realistic, we have been to Mars. We are currently on Mars. A shockingly small percent of people give a shit. The rest don't. So you want to say like this is humanity's next big move? I would disagree. Sure, if a human landed on Mars, would it be international news? Yes. Would it, uh, you know, make the history books, etc.? Yes, yes, yes. Yep. So again, the cool factor. But so what? That's really, if, as long as you acknowledge that's what you're buying, you're buying the cool factor. You're not buying anything practical at all, okay? This is a fool's errand, ridiculous, absurd, pointless, suicidal, and a huge waste of money, but it's really cool, so we want to try it. And just to kind of, in effect, go in there and take a selfie and be like, bang, we did it. Let me take a selfie. Okay, when it comes to cost, I tell you what, it's not my money, it's their money. And other people can do what they want with their own money. I mean, that's the definition of ownership. Go right ahead, that's fine. No, just to keep in proper perspective how much money we're talking about here. Well, what's a billion dollars? Hmm, well, billion dollars will definitely buy a meal for all hungry people on earth, for sure, easily. You know, what about $10 million? Well, $100 billion. Well, some estimates say that around $100 billion, you're starting to handle world hunger pretty much in a more permanent fashion. You could do leaps and bounds, and you could save millions of lives. Low birth weight babies and underdeveloped children, people dying of nutritional deficiencies. Like, these problems can go away or be greatly reduced with a snap of the fingers with $100 billion. Let's look at the largest thing that humans have ever made. In this case, the International Space Station. And I shouldn't say largest, I should say most expensive and most ambitious. Yeah, and they hauled up there into the atmosphere. It's like, you know, 400K uh, away from the surface of the Earth, give or take. That's awesome. That is an achievement of humanity. Cool, so far so good. That was $150 billion, my friends. And it didn't, once you buy it, you don't just stop paying for it. I mean, like, you still got to trickle in billions a year, you know, and resupplying it and maintaining it and paying the astronauts that are there. Food. Yeah, it's like 2000 bucks a lemon. <laughs> so that's $150 billion. Okay, so just so you're aware, uh, world hunger could be solved for about the cost of the space station. But they chose space station, and we still got a bunch of hungry people. That's fine. It's your money, but just saying. The International Space Station is easy, super easy, compared to going to Mars. How much is it going to cost? Look, let's not believe the snake oil salesman here. It's not going to be $5 billion or $10 billion. You're not going to, you can't build an international space station right outside our front door for $150 billion and then expect to build something on the other side of the solar system for less than that. That's absurd. We don't know what this is going to cost, but it's very safe to say that a quarter of a trillion dollars to a half a trillion dollars are some numbers that some people throw around. What is really the best use of, let's say, $500 billion? Should we just, you know, solve all preventable diseases or 90% of them in one shot? Should we just have free universal health care for all humans on Earth? Should we, you know, feed all of the hungry people uh, on Earth? I mean, man, that would, like, buy a phone for everyone on Earth. That's for damn sure. Uh, Like, there is just countless, infinite things that you could do with $500 billion. Nowhere on that list would it reasonably occur to me, 
and other reasonable people like do a suicide mission to Mars. Why? For the selfie. Because we could solve world hunger. No, 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 no. We got to get the selfie. But we could get credit for saving hundreds of millions of people's lives. No! We could actually give a free water purifier to everyone on nope. Earth. We could wipe out uh, waterborne diseases no! you know, across the Earth. And then you could get credit for that. No, 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 no. no. We got to take a selfie on Mars. Let me take a selfie. selfie. It starts to sound like kind of a weird plan, doesn't it? And when you put it in perspective and you realistically think about it, you practically think about it, it would be the dumbest use of money. It really would. Bill Gates, bless his heart, he's been doing a lot of great work in philanthropy throughout the world. A lot of diseases have just disappeared off the face of the earth because of him. Yeah, uh, look him up. That could be done with this same amount of money here. Or you can get a selfie. Let me take a selfie. Selfie, 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 selfie. Let me just throw on on the end here for dessert, okay? Look, you can move into the ocean, all right? The, the earth is just surrounded by an incredible amount of ocean. Let's say 361 million square kilometers of land. Well, land under the ocean, ready to go, okay? But I tell you if we can figure out how to live down there, we're sitting great because actually humanity's next hope, man, basically has all the benefits of living on another planet, except it just happens to be on ours and it solves a lot of the key ones. For example, uh, water, power, radiation, heat, gravity, etc., etc., etc. In other words, living under the ocean would make infinitely more sense than moving to Mars or another planet or the moon or something like that. Infinite more sense. Hell yeah, hell yeah. But at least if you're on Earth, hell, they could send a boat out there and like a long cable with a hook on it and uh, send you down some supplies. They could bang that out in an afternoon. Right. But you're on the space station? Hooey! We're talking rockets and shit. <laughs> I mean, they don't just fly up there in an airplane. You know, they don't just call FedEx. So living in the ocean is a gajillion times easier to access, resupply, rescue for that damn matter. God forbid something went wrong at the bottom of the ocean there, but hell, at least you can run a cable down and hook the bastard, you know, and then just yank him up. Again, you can bang that out in an afternoon with one boat. <laughs> you got someone stranded on the moon? Well, <laughs> the guys at NASA are going to light a cigarette because... <laughs> so, if you really want to make the next evolution for humanity here, move to the bottom of the ocean. You know, but after a while, people would quickly conclude, why move way down there when we can just live on the, <clears throat> on the surface and uh, it's a million times easier. Yeah, living our normal life on the normal earth that we're normally living on is a million times better than the bottom of the ocean, which is a million times better than living on Mars, okay? So, I don't know. What, why would I trade living here to living on Mars? That would make no sense to me. Even if I survived, oh my God, which I doubt. Mars is hype. It's a trap. Whenever you guys want to launch your little suicide mission, you know, on a pointless fool's ass errand, I hope you're successful. I hope you land there. I hope it works out. I hope you get that selfie. And I hope the team that goes there gets its due credit and it, it gets its due memory into perpetuity. I hope so. But you will never convince me that it's a good idea. No, it's a shitty, terrible plan.